Welcome to Too Fond of Books. My name is Janelle, and it's almost time for March Mystery Madness. We are getting closer and closer to the fantastic month of March where we read mysteries and talk about mysteries and show our love for all things mystery. In today's video, I want to give you some recommendations for what you can do with this year's theme, which is two by two or doubles. Since it's, it's 2022, we thought we would play around with that two by two theme. There are no set prompts, um, just whatever, whatever comes to your mind that fits this two by two theme. So I have a stack of books in front of me um, and some fun ways that you can interpret the theme of two by two. Um, if you've watched my channel for any length of time, you know that I love to recommend books and so I have quite a list here. So this is actually going to be a two-part series of recommendations. So let's just dive right into part one. First, I am going to show you some books that fit um, with uh, the theme in the words that are in the title. So these books all have words like two, twin, double, dual, duplex, duplicate, pair, repeat, second, twice, twofold, that kind of thing. Here are some books from my collection that I found that fit that, that have those words in the title. First up, we have One, Two, Buckle My Shoe by Agatha Christie. This book has actually three names. The, the version that I have is called the, the Patriotic Murders. It's also published as An Overdose of Death. But its original title that Agatha Christie gave it was One, Two, Buckle My Shoe. This is a Poirot mystery that was written in 1941. And uh, Poirot goes to the dentist and then discovers that that same day his dentist has been murdered. This was, this was a fun one. Um, this one was actually quite political, uh, so the, the patriotic murders, that title fits uh, really well. Um, so yeah, this is a fun Agatha Christie. And the nice thing too with Agatha Christie is that you can jump in right at, 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 and read whatever you want. So this is a Hercule Poirot book, but don't worry about reading the series out of order. You can just jump right in. Next up, we have Double for Death by Rex Stout. This is a Nero Wolf mystery. No, it's not. Rex Stout, sorry, Rex Stout is famous for his Nero Wolf series, but he also wrote a few books about Tecum, Tecumseh Fox, sorry, I'm not saying that name very well, who is a private investigator. And this particular one was published in uh, 1939. Um, and so this uh, private investigator, Fox, had a sharp eye for clues in a murder case, but this time he was seeing double. The late financier Ridley Thorpe had been shot twice. There were two gorgeous suspects, two very good motives, two hot-headed suitors, and two well-used murder weapons. Plus, Fox thought his client was out to double-cross him. It made Fox think twice. Then there was a second Wall Street murder and Fox began to put two and two together. When he, what he got was too astounding to believe. This one is perfect. I, frankly, I mean, how can you not, how can you not read this one during March Mystery Madness when the theme is two by two? And actually this is one that I haven't read yet and so I'm fairly certain that this is gonna end up on my own pile of possibilities because it's just too perfect. Okay, next up is another uh, Rex Stout, and this one is a Nero Wolf, and this is Second Conf The Second Confession. This was published in 1949, so it's 10 years after the, the previous one that I showed you. Um, a missing membership card, a machine gunning mobster, hit and run murder. What begins as an ordinary investigation threatens to turn into an all-out war when the great detective class clashes once again with his arch nemesis, the mysterious crime lord X. But when the object of their dispute is murdered, the deadly confrontation becomes an unlikely collaboration as Wolf and Archie attempt to displace one confessed murderer with another. So uh, Nero Wolf, this is a really fun series set in New York City 
and Nero Wolf is a detective that rarely leaves his brownstone. He, he loves good food, he's hired his own private chef, and he also loves orchids, and so he has a whole room in his house called the Orchid Room, that, and he spends a lot of time there as well. Archie Goodwin is his assistant who basically does all the legwork in the, in the investigations. So there you have it, the second confession. Oh, and again, I should say, this is another series that you can dip in and out of. I wouldn't worry about reading it in order. Okay, and now I have a couple short story options for you because you can totally read short stories for this theme um, and, you know, pack more reading in. And so we have two short stories in this collection that would fit. This is, this is called Double Sin and Other Stories by Agatha Christie, featuring Hercule Poirot and Miss Marple. In this collection, we have Double Sin, and we also have The Double Clue. Yes. And both of those are, are Poirot short stories, uh, so that could be a great option for you, um, if, you know, if you already have a lot of books or um, you know, if you just want to read short stories for the for the month, uh, there's some short story options. Um, and then we have No Second Chance by Harlan Coben. I really enjoy Harlan Coben. I especially enjoy his standalone books. Um, and this is one of those. This was published in 2003 shot twice by an unseen assailant. Ms. Dr. Mark Seidman lies in a hospital bed. His wife is dead. His six-month-old daughter has vanished. Just when his world seems forever shattered, the note arrives. If you contact the authorities, we disappear. You will never know what happened to her. We want two million dollars. There will be no second chance. Mark has nowhere to turn and no one to trust, and the authorities are closing in on a new suspect, him. Cornered by deadly secrets about his wife, about an old love he's never forgotten, and about his own past, Mark has only one chance to get it right and bring his daughter home. It's been years since I read this, but I do remember really enjoying this one. And this one's also perfect because it's called No Second Chance. But the main character in this book was shot twice, perfect um, and the ransom note demands two million dollars so <laughs> there's a little two by two for you in the description okay and then finally in this category there we have death knocks twice by Robert Thorogood this is part of his death in paradise series uh, Robert Thorogood created the death in paradise TV show and he's also written so far four books um, with those characters. Uh, he's going with the characters from the first few seasons and so the detective is Detective Inspector Richard Poole who arrives from England to this island in the Caribbean um, to be the uh, kind of head detective on the force in Honoré. And um, uh, this one is great. Death Knocks Twice. This one is a good locked room mystery. Two dead bodies, a family of suspects, one grumpy detective. So this also fits because there are two bodies in this one. Reluctantly stationed on the sweltering, sweltering Caribbean island of Saint-Marie, Detective Inspector Richard Poole dreams of cold winds, drizzly rain, and a pint in his local pub. Just as he is feeling as fed up as can be, a mysterious vagrant is found dead at the historic Beaumont Plantation. Immediately assumed to be suicide, D.I. Poole is no, not so convinced and determined to prove otherwise. Never mind that the only fingerprints on the murder weapon belong to the victim, or that the room was locked from the inside. Before long, death knocks twice and a second body turns up. The hunt is on to solve the case despite the best efforts of the enigmatic Beaumont family. Okay, next up I have some recommendations for you with titles that have double letters. Now, I could have gone crazy here and done, you know, just double letters randomly, but I've decided to just do ones where there's double letters side by side in the title. 
So to start with, we have The Sanctuary Seeker by Bernard Knight. This is a Crowner John uh, mystery, this is a historical mystery series. And this is another one where I feel like it's totally fine to read them out of order in whatever order you want. Um, there's probably a little bit, you know, that that is advantageous to read in order, but uh, honestly, I don't think it really matters. And also, I have to say that I absolutely love the covers of this series. So this is a series um, set in the 1100s in England, and this particular book is set in November 1194. Appointed by Richard the Lionheart as the first coroner for the county of Devon, Sir John de Wolfe, recently returned from the Crusades, rides out to the lonely moorland village of Widcombe to hold an inquest on an unidentified body. But on his return to Exeter, the new coroner is incensed to find that his own brother-in-law, Richard Sheriff Richard de Revel, is intent on thwarting the murder investigation, particularly when it emerges that the dead man is a crusader and a member of one of Devon's finest and most honorable families. Now, I'm getting the impression that this one actually, it is. Um, this one is actually the first in the series, so that's even more perfect for people who like to start at the beginning. Okay, and then we have The Seeker by S.G. McLean. I read this just a few months ago and really, really enjoyed it. This is another historical mystery set in London in 1654, and it's the winner of the 2015 Crime Writers Association Endeavor Historical Dagger Award and well worth it. This one was really well written, really interesting characters. I really enjoyed this one. In the teeming warren of spies, exiles, and assassins that is Cromwell's London, the Lord Protector's most feared agent is Damien Seeker. No one knows where Seeker comes from or even his real name, but one thing is certain, nothing remains hidden from him for long. When a popular captain and hero of Cromwell's all-powerful army is murdered and Elias Ellingworth, an outspoken critic of Cromwell's regime, is found standing over the bleeding body clutching a knife, his guilt seems to be without question. Yet Seeker is not convinced. He will stop at nothing to unmask the true killer and save Ellingworth from the gallows. Okay, and then we have The Field of Blood by Paul Doherty. This is part of his... Um, the Sorrowful Mysteries of Brother Athelstan series, again, historical mystery set in London in 1380. So Brother Athelstan is the priest of St. Erkenwald's in medieval Suffolk in London. And um, I really enjoy, I really enjoy this series. There is um, uh, another character is uh, the coroner of the city, Sir John Cranston. Um, so there you have it, The Field of Blood. And then, um, any in the Mrs. Jeffries series by Emily Brightwell will work because Jeffries has those double Fs and every book in the series is Mrs. Jeffries and. This is quite a long running series, um, but really fun. It's a historical mystery series set in the Victorian time period and Mrs. Jeffries is the housekeeper for an inspector at um, Scotland Yard um, who maybe got promoted beyond his level and um, Mrs. Jeffries, who is a widow of a Scotland Yard detective, um, tries to help him out and she enlists the help of the other staff as well. And it's just a fun, cozy historical series. Okay, and then we have a couple by Earl Stanley Gardner who wrote the Perry Mason series. So this is a series um, set in the United States. Uh, so first up, we have The Case of the Careless Kitten. Isn't this edition fantastic? This is a, a pocketbook edition. Um, and this Perry Mason was originally written in 1942. Perry Mason, of course, is a lawyer um, who helps with these cases. So. Um, Here's some, you know, if you like legal thrillers or courtroom drama, you know, kind of these Perry Masons are, you know, some of the earliest of that, of that style. And then we also have the case of the troubled trustee. Um, there's two E's at the end. And this one is from 1965. Okay. And then one more. 
um, is the Miss Seaton series. This is the, the first, the original ones were written by Heron Carvick. And again, this is another series that has the word Miss Seaton in the title of all the books. Um, so you could read any from this series. And this one's perfect because it has a double S in, the, in Miss and a double E in Seaton. Um, I love this series. This is a cozy mystery series set in England. I would say it's more traditional though because it was written before cozy mysteries were even a thing. This is the first one that was ever written and it was this was from 1968. Miss Seaton is a retired art teacher who gets herself involved in mysteries and I just really love her. She's a fantastic character. Okay, um, and then we have authors with double letters in their names. And so I did uh, the same thing where the double letters are side by side. So first up, you could read anything by Anne Perry. Anne Perry, this is perfect for two by two because there's two N's in her first name and two R's in her last name, two by two. Anne Perry um, writes a number of series. She writes the Charlotte and Thomas Pitt series, historical mysteries set in Victorian London. She also writes this series, the William Monk series, which is a little earlier than the Charlotte and Thomas Pitt series. And William Monk is a detective who has lost his memory after an accident, which adds a really fascinating um, ongoing issue to the series. She has also written five books in a World War I mystery series. Um, she has a, a long running Christmas mystery series and those ones are more novellas. She's also written, um, currently there are five books in the Daniel Pitt series, which is a follow up to the Charlotte and Thomas Pitt series. Daniel is their son. Um, and that series starts in 1910. And then she's also, her most recent series is the Alina Standish series. There are currently four. That one is set in the 30s. Alina is a photographer and that one has got like espionage kind of um, vibes. Um, you could also read anything by A.A. A. Fair. Now, I had to show you this because isn't this just an absolutely fantastic cover? I adore this cover. It's so great. This is um, one of the Dell map back covers that, that came out. This, um, this one was originally published in 33, maybe 1933. No, 43. It's going to be, it's got to be 43. It was Roman numerals. I'm not good at knowing Roman numerals. <laughs> A.A. Fair is the pseudonym of Earl Stanley Gardner, who also writes the Perry Mason um, books. And A.A. Fair write, wrote a series of um, Bertha Cool and Donald Lamb. There are 30 books in that series written between 1939 and 1970. Here is another one, Shills Can't Cash Chips, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, and this one is from 1961, so this one is later in the series. Now, um, they are described as, I got this description off of Fantastic Fiction, fast-moving, skull-cracking team. Bertha Cool, a 200-pound lady who uses the language of a longshoreman, and Donald Lamb, a pint-sized process server who would have been in the morgue long ago, except that he can think faster than the next man or woman. So there you have it. Uh, he wrote under a pseudonym, I, I think, because he was going for a very different style of mystery with that series. Um, you also have A.A. A. Milne, who only wrote two mysteries. Now, for a while, I was under the impression that he actually only wrote one mystery, and that's this one, the um, Red House mystery that he wrote in 1922. But then I discovered that he also wrote a mystery called Four Days Wonder in 1933, which is described as a comedy mystery. A young woman obsessed with murder mysteries goes to visit her aunt at a country house only to find her dead. Invigorated by the excitement, she launches an investigation. And now I am on the hunt for that book. I really, really want a copy of that book. I'm intrigued. Okay, and then we also have J.J. Fargion, 
Um, he was extremely prolific and he wrote between 1924 and 1955. This is a fantastic crime club edition I have of Holiday at Half Mast. And I can't tell you anything about this series because there's no synop or this book because there's no synopsis in this edition and I can't find any um, synopsis online either. <laughs> but uh, JJ Farjan Farjan um, has a couple books at least in the British Library Crime Classics series, so he is um, a golden age author that you can get your hands on if you're interested. And then we also have JJ Merrick, um, which is a pseudonym for John Creasy. Um, John Creasy was an incredibly prolific mystery writer. This Gideon series, there are 22 in the series written between 1955 and 1978. And they are about Commander George Gideon of Scotland Yard. And these are poli police procedurals. And then we have S.S. Van Dyne, um, who wrote 12 Philo Vance uh, mysteries between 1926 and 1939. These are set in the United States and Philo Vance is an amateur sleuth. Okay, and then we have C.C. Humphreys um, who writes, he's a Canadian author who writes historical fiction and historical mysteries and he has this duology um, about that are that are set in London in the 1600s. This first one is called Plague and then the second one is called Fire. So he's written historical mysteries set around the plague of 1665 and the fire of 1666. Plague is the winner of the Arthur Ellis Award for best crime novel. Murder has a new friend and then we have Fire, London, 1666, and the devil must have his due. Okay, uh, then let's move on to two-person author teams. I think this is also a fascinating, um, uh, a, good, a good way to interpret this theme. So we have Ellery Queen is the pseudonym of cousins Frederick Denae and Manfred B. Lee. Ellery Queen is also the name of their famous detective who has appeared in more than 30 novels and 70 short stories. He has been on the radio, in the movies, on television, and in comic books. The Mystery Writers of America gave Queen seven Edgar Awards and its coveted Grand Master Award. Danae and Lee also founded and edited Ellery Queen's Mystery Magazine, which at 61 years um, and still going, is the longest running mystery anthology magazine in American history. So Ellery Queen um, fits perfectly um, for a two-person writing team. Um, also Ellery Queen has um, doubles in both his first and last name. Um, so this one from their series is called Double Double. In a quiet New England town where talk of murder was all around, a childhood verse was the only clue as the bodies dropped two by two. <laughs> it was a game of death by simple rhyme whose victims were picked by poetic meter and rhyme. For murder so foul, a, a sleuth was needed, a man like Ellery, a man, a detective unsuperseded. But one grisly accident was still to be seen involving a car, an explosion, and our inimitable Mr. Queen. This is another one from the series that I have not read yet, but it is so perfect for this theme that I am putting it on my pile of possibilities. All right, um, another two-person team is Charles Todd. This is a mo mother and son team, Carolyn and Charles. Carolyn passed away, unfortunately, in August of 2021. And they have two series. Um, they have the um, Ian Rutledge series, which is historical mystery set immediately following World War I. And Ian Rutledge is a detective with Scotland Yard. They also have a Bess Crawford series, which is set during World War I. And Bess is a nurse at the front. And then they also have a standalone called The Murder Stone. 
Okay, moving along, we have DE Ireland, and this is a team of award-winning authors, Meg Mims and Sharon Pisacreta. Pisacreta? Sorry, I'm totally not saying that right. They are longtime friends who decided to collaborate on this unique series based on George Bernard Shaw's wonderfully witty play, Pygmalion. Uh, while they admit the lovely film My Fair Lady and its soundtrack proved to be inspiration, they are careful to stick to Shaw's vision of the beloved characters from Eliza to Higgins to Pickering, Mrs. Pierce, Freddie Einsford Hill and his family, while adding a slew of new characters they've dreamed up to flesh out their own version of events post Big Malian. Now I got that from all of these descriptions I, I got from Fantastic Fiction, but I agree with that wholeheartedly. I just recently reread this and they are they are totally true to Pygmalion, to the way the characters are drawn in Pygmalion. And so I love this historical mystery series set in Edwardian England um, with fantastic characters. It's got a, such a great sense of time and place. Um, it's funny, um, well-written, good, a good mystery. And this is the first one in the series called Wouldn't It Be Deadly? Okay, next up we have Robin Page. And this is the pseudonym of a husband and wife writing team, Susan Whitting Albert and Robert Albert. Um, they wrote this Sir Charles Sheridan series. And there are 12 books in the series. This first one is called Death at the Bishop's Keep. This is a Victorian slash Edwardian historical mystery series um, that is really quite fun. Next up, we have Francis and Richard Lockridge. This is a husband and wife writing team again. Um, Francis, or Richard, is an American writer of detective fiction and um, his frequent collaborator, his wife, Francis. They co-wrote the Mr. and Mrs. North series. There are 26 books in the series between 1940 and 1963. The two books that I have here are both from 1942. This is Hanged for a Sheep, and this is Death in the Nile. Mr. and Mrs. North are amateur sleuths who get involved. Um, I believe they work in the publishing industry. Okay, one more, and we have Maj Chaval and Per Valle, who are another husband and wife writing team from Sweden. They were both committed Marxists, and between 1965 and 1975, they collaborated on 10 mysteries featuring Martin Beck, who is a police detective. Um, and this is the first in the series called Rosanna. Okay, and then finally, nope, not finally, two more, um, two more uh, ways that you can interpret this theme. First of all, duologies. I already showed you one, C.C. Humphreys has that duology called Plague, and the two books are Plague and Fire. This is a great way to interpret this, this theme, and also a great way to read some series. If you're, if you're um, someone who is like looking at trying to, to get some series read this year, this could be a good option for you for the month of um, March. So there's two more duologies that I want to show you. First is um, by M.G. McCade. This is The Last Victim in Glen Ross and Last Scene in Aberdeen. This is um, a police procedural series set in Scotland. In the suspenseful tradition of Ian Rankin comes a pulse-quickening debut novel set in the Scottish countryside from a compelling new voice in mystery fiction. This first one was written in 2003. The main character is Seth Mornay. He's ex, he's ex Royal Marine, returned home two years ago to start a new life working for the Grampian Police Force. He is now a detective sergeant with the Criminal Investigation Division. So there you have, there's a duology for you. And then the other one is the Memoirs of a Bow Street one Runner duology by T.F. Banks. This is a historical mystery series set in the Regency in 1815. The first one is The Thief Taker, and the second one is The Emperor's Assassin. Um, 
Henry Morton is a thief taker in London. And uh, this is a great duology. I, I really like this one. And then last but not least, you could read books about a pair of detectives. Two detectives, a team that works together um, in the books or the series. And I could talk about this, but I just recently did a video for Cloak and Dagger Christmas. So I am going to link that here in the cards and down in the description box if you want to watch that video for some recommendations for pairs of detectives. Okay, I think this video has gone on long enough. Um, I, I hope that you got uh, some good recommendations for your reading for March Mystery Madness. And I will be back very soon with part two of my recommendations videos. Let me know in the comment section down below if you've read any of these books or if you have any great um, ideas of how you could play with this theme for the month. I, I always am interested in seeing how people interpret this theme. So let me know in the comment section down below and I will see you for another video soon.